all, my name is Aria Carly and I am a PM on the Windows Update team who works on both Windows Updates and Windows Update for Business. And with me are three amazing subject matter experts and we're here to talk to you guys about why Windows Updates happen when they do. With that, Sean, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, so my name is Sean Tiki. Uh, I'm one of the developers on the user experience side of things and I own most of the notifications for Windows Update. Uh, I'm Alina. I'm also a, a dev in the Windows Update User Experience team and, you know, working hard to improve the update experience for our customers as well as, you know, keeping them secure. Uh, hi, I'm Pratik. I'm a dev on the orchestration side of things. Uh, I work on figuring out a good balance between user experience and performance versus business goals of updating. Uh, the devices. So um, that's me. <laughs> awesome. Thank you all for joining. I'm really excited. On many of these calls that we do or at conferences, you're often hearing from engineering program managers. And well, we know some stuff, very small amount. The people on the screen that you see right now, Alina, Sean, Pratik, and many more devs behind the scenes are the ones who are actually writing the code to make this a reality. And so I'm really excited to have this opportunity to have them talk to you guys about why Windows updates happen when. That, that puts a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah, well, it happens. No pressure, no pressure. Um, you guys can, you know, look stuff up behind the scenes. It's fine. Uh, Pratik, with that, would you mind going over the general flow for the retail experience of updates? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, on retail devices, what we want to do is keep users up to date, uh, having them uh, having their devices secure and keeping them productive is a, a, a North Star business goal of ours. Uh, so the way we do that is we make sure that every day we do at least one scan. Um, and uh, if a scan finds some updates, we make the decision based on, uh, based on the update, whether to, you know, immediately go and download and install or or to defer because of various reasons that I can get into uh, a little bit later. So when it's a security update, like definition updates and such, we just directly go and download install because we want to keep devices secure. If it's uh, another type of update like store apps or Windows, uh, like the new LCU or something like that, then we make a series of decisions. We uh, we want to be nice and we we say okay is the user actively using the machine if they are then we want to defer the update to a later time alina can talk about how that deferral happens and how we make sure it is actually a good time uh, whenever we defer it to uh, and uh, we do that for download we do that for install and we do it for various reasons uh, for example user is actively using the device or user is not actively using the device, but something is taking full screen, like you're watching a Netflix movie or you're playing a game, something like that. Uh, and all the way down to like uh, sustainability related reasons, like currently the power grid is powered mostly by fossil fuels. So we want to defer to a time when it's the power mix is a lot more green. Uh, with that, I'll let Alina take over the deferral side of things. And uh, yeah, so, um... Like Pratik mentioned, you know, a lot of uh, work is being done in the background uh, so that uh, the updates that we do are non as non-disruptive as possible for the for the customers, right? And so uh, one of the important pieces of that is this uh, this thing we call the smart scheduler, which I should I should uh, you know uh, emphasize that it's not ML, it's not AI, it's actually just a local heuristic uh, that we use to kind of you know, we look at the previous pattern of activity on the device, and this includes, you know, uh, when is the user active as well as when is the device on battery versus AC typically, when is the device typically hibernating versus sleeping. Uh, 
So based on this, uh, this history of activity, we try to make uh, predictions about and, you know, guesses a little bit about when is the, the next good time for us to do work. And, you know, obviously some are obvious, you know, like definitely when the user is not there, definitely when, uh, you know, the device is on AC, we don't want to risk draining battery and all that. Uh, and yeah, very recently in Windows 11, we did, uh, Pratik mentioned, we added the sustainability, the whole sustainability uh, aspect of it, where uh, we, yeah, we look at usually the, the, the grid uh, for your location. And, you know, we try to pick uh, times that are green uh, so that, uh, you know, the, the, the power consumption is better. Is smart busy scheduler, whatever that thing is called. Uh, the thing that we actually use to determine intelligent active hours, or how does that play in? Yeah, that's exactly. That's the same. That's actually the same component. Uh, it can be used. You know, it's used for scheduling actual work, like download, installs, reboots. Uh, but it's also used for building intelligent active hours. It's we're looking at the same history of activity. And, you know, picking the times where the user is most active versus not active at all. And so that's what that's what powers intelligent active hours. Yep. Awesome. Very cool. Now, you know, obviously there's we, we try to do the best we can with, you know, this. As I said, it's a heuristic. So it's, a you know, a kind of a best effort in a way. Uh, and so it can only it can always happen that we, you know, previously you were never active at 3 a.m. And we decided to do some updates then. And tonight, for some reason, you know, you couldn't sleep your own. Uh, so the question becomes then, what do we do then? Um, and what do we do is at the scheduled time, we recheck uh, most of these, uh, we call them deferral reasons to make sure it is a good time to, to, to actually do the update. So, you know, if the user happens to be unexpectedly active or the device in, happens to be on uh, battery, uh, we would defer, essentially cancel the update work and, you know, look for the next best time. And uh, Pratik might want to say more about the deferral specifically. Um, yeah, so uh, there are windows of opportunity where we want to be nicer to the users uh, as compared to uh, updating the device. But as you can imagine, the goal is to keep people secure, as secure as possible. So after a cer certain amount of time, uh, sometime, uh, and it's configurable, but let's say two days, uh, uh, if you've still not been able to update, we try to not defer and we try to immediately download and install the update. Um, there are a lot of uh, knobs that are at play here. Uh, and of course, there's a simplified uh, summary of it. Um, but the goal is for goal for my team is to get the uh, updates to install completed. Then there are some updates that require reboot. And when it, when we get to that hard part reboot, we uh, point it to Sean and Sean's code handles the hard part. <laughs> so with that, Sean, do you want to take over? So when the device actually reaches reboot required, that's when our user experience and notifications come into play. Um, in general, we have two different types of notification flows that we use to make devices reboot. The first applies to quality updates and uh, our monthly releases, our cumulative updates. Uh, and that's what users get in general once a month. Uh, on those types of updates, we generally try to notify the user as little as possible, since this is a common experience. And we'll use Alina's smart scheduler uh, to understand if when we should do the reboot at a time the user is not going to be around so they get the least disruption possible. Um, at the time of the reboot, we also use uh, smart busy checks to determine if the user is likely to come back within a certain period of time to understand if uh, they might get interrupted by the actual reboot making the machine offline. Um, the other major type of experience is our feature update experience. This is the release that happens roughly once a year. Um, and this is when we have new features and new experiences for the user uh, that we ship, and it takes a lot longer to install. Um, 
For these, we actually take a different approach where we try to notify the user, let them know, hey, you're going to get these new experiences. And um, we try to make sure that they acknowledge that the reboot is going to happen since it is more disruptive. Um, in these scenarios, we tend to utilize our reboot downtime estimates. Uh, this is a machine learning model that we have in place that takes into account the hardware of the device and the type of updates applicable to determine how long the machine is going to be offline. And we use that information both in our uh, scheduling and in our notifications to let the user know if you happen to see one of our notifications about it, that it's going to take anywhere from five minutes to an hour, depending on your system and the type of updates possible. Um, we also have a lot of configurability that we uh, allow our enterprise admins uh, via our policies uh, that allow the admins to control how the experience works and uh, a lot of control over deadlines to make sure that their machines stay up to date uh, regardless of user activity uh, because compliance is requirements in most cases. Yeah, I would like to say, like, maybe that this permeates from the discussion, but a lot of uh, our work is, you know, this balancing act between keep on, keeping the device secure and, you know, respecting the IT admin's preferences and not upsetting the users too much. Uh, and, you know, actually having a positive user experience. So that, that's definitely probably our, our, that's how I would summarize our work, really. That is a great call out. I definitely think that there is sometimes having dealt with many IT admins over the last few years doing Windows updates, I think that there is this great amount of feedback and great amount of love of the fact that both us and IT admins in some ways have the same customer. We're both trying to make sure that end users update without losing any information, without having to go to their tech help or community desk or whatever support looks like for them. And without having to waste hours waiting for an update to happen or being unproductive. And I know actually just, Sean, to call you out, one feature I'm super excited about in Windows 11 is we actually just made it so that those compliance deadline notifications now show the commercial IT admin's enterprise name or their tenant ID for Azure joined devices. And so like, that's one way we're trying to do that balance. Uh, but one of the reasons we don't actually do all of the requests that come in besides not having enough devs to code all of the requests that come in, is all of these conversations about if we did this request, what would the end user experience be? Would this hurt productivity? Would this hurt security goals? Would this hurt these other things? And the brilliant folks in this call, especially on the UX side, are really focused on making sure that end user experience is phenomenal. And I would like, we are also looking into investing in the uh, upper hydration area. Uh, so, you know, a, a lot of the reboot experience, a lot of the, the annoying part of the reboot experience is obviously losing work context, using unsaved data. Uh, and that's another area where we're looking to, to invest and making sure third party developers, you know, are good citizens and, uh, you know, the post reboot, ideally the user would not even notice anything happen. Yeah, we've made a lot of work in that area, but there's a lot of room for improvement too. We're working on that. Absolutely. I'm also excited for all the sustainability investments. I know that we've been driving forward and Patik mentioned earlier. That's definitely going to be really awesome to see how we can benefit the environment as well as making sure the devices stay secure and protected. Yeah, uh, we, this is a recent feature and uh, we, are, we are seeing positive uh, change in the positive direction, let's put it that way. And uh, there is a lot of room for, for uh, expanding that feature sustainably, so to speak, uh, and, and grow it in various areas uh, while measuring that we are doing the right thing. Um, we are making a lot of investment, especially in the sustainability uh, side of things. So I'm very excited to see uh, how it you know multiplies and how it uh, actually saves on carbon in, in various forms. Awesome. So we know that these are just some of the things that we're investing in and some of the things we're looking at. But we want to hear back from you guys what you really want in the future. What are those things that are top of mind for you? What would make your update experience even better? So please feel free to reach out, whether you're able to comment on this video or reach out to me at Aria Updated on Twitter. We really appreciate your feedback. It's truly driven a lot of product changes 
actually many of the changes we've had over the last few years have been feedback or requests from IT admins and end users. We really are looking at Feedback Hub. We're looking at Twitter. We're looking at all of our other support channels. So please reach out and tell us how we can make your update experience even better. And with that, thank you all. And thank you to my amazing guests and the real stars of the show, Alina, Sean, and Pratik. Y'all rock. Thank, thank you, Aria. <laughs> Thanks, Aria. Thank you.